Hello, welcome. Today I want to talk very briefly about a kit lens. Is it any good? Can you take good pictures with it? Can you though? Really, can you? I've spent a lot of time over the years with series of mobile phones. They take great photographs and the processing power within the mobile phone is such that it does its own rendering, it does its own contrast and colors. And what you see on the screen when you take a photograph is, it just blows you away. If I just point this out the window now, click, <laughs> sorry. This picture now, I just took on my mobile phone. Astonishing. And that's without any editing or filtering. So they're very good. But what I do find with the mobile phone is that because it's got a digital lens, as I try and zoom in, you know, you pinch the screen, you zoom in, it pixelates and it distorts. And that's where an optical lens has a better advantage than a mobile phone. Great for taking in your back pocket and snippy snappy taking pictures quickly. But to take what I consider to be proper photography, proper photographs, uh, you need a good camera. You really do. You know, I'm not talking, let's be professional here, let's um, have all the gear and the gizmos. But actually, what I did, I bought this on eBay, £200 it cost me, entry-level DSLR, Nikon D3200. It's 2012 technology, almost 10 years old. But boy, 24 megapixel CMOS sensor, it, it, it's really, really good. And if you followed my videos, you've seen, I've taken tons and tons of photographs with it. Some are naff, you know, that, you know, questionable. But sometimes I take one or two and I think, wow, did you take that? Was that you? <laughs> anyway, back to the entry level um, DSLR with its kit lens. You get an entry level DSLR. I had actually looked on eBay and one of these was selling in black, 27 pounds on eBay. <laughs> like people don't want them anymore but they're not bad bits of kit and they come with the 18 to 55 kit lens so what I wanted to do in this video is actually experiment a little go out into the field well you know not the field that's out there but go out and just see how good this is now I know at 18 mil the lowest aperture this will give me is it says it on here 3.5 so you know relatively wide not not your wide angle at 10 mil at 1.4 which is considered to be a fast speed for a lens but 3.5 at 18 mil and at 55 mil the lowest aperture I, I can get is 5.6 it's it's a pretty standard you know it's perhaps not made with the best technology but it's robust it's solid it has autofocus technology it has very uh, vibration reduction and when you take the auto focus off you can do manual focusing so you can actually tweak an image and just get a refined image so what I want to do is go out spend the day in jump in the car maybe go and do some um, uh, roadside photography and talk you through just how versatile a kit lens actually is and why you can get away with just having it as your go-to lens. I don't use it enough and perhaps I ought to. So let's go out, let's go and see what we can do with this thing. Put it through its paces. So, out in the field. I'm going to sit down on the job for this one. First and foremost, we can consider this in two ways. It's a wide angle lens, it's 18 millimeter, but it's a wide angle zoom lens because we can push it to 55. Alternatively, we can class it as a mini zoom lens. <laughs> you know, we have the versatility to take it from wide angle to 55 mil. Now, what is 18, what is 55? What is basically the focal range? So if I show you here, if it focuses, we've got the end optical glass, there's one inside as well. So basically you've got two edges of glass that separate themselves and they give them a convex, concave, you know, sort of like, like, like the retina in your eye. From the front lens, the actual point where 
the focal point hits, you know, it's like if you're short-sighted, that focal range is beyond and um, in front of the retina. So you get this little lens, the end, end lens here, at 18 millimeter. For the lens, it's pushed right to the end of the lens itself. So the distance between this and your sensor is 18 millimeters. If I push it to 55, it pushes that inside lens further along that way, making it a distance of 55 millimeter from the sensor. And if you can see inside, it's actually pushed inside. So if I zoom back out, you'll see the lens appearing. So that lens moves in and out, and that gives me my focal range. If you have a look at this, I've got this lovely avenue of trees because we're in autumn now. So what I thought I'd do is try and demonstrate the capacity of the 18 through 55, taking a shot, make sure there's no cars coming, taking a shot down the view of this lane with the trees on either side. And there's one thing I haven't failed, uh, mentioned yet, and that is at 18 millimeter, you sometimes get what's called lens distortion. Let's lift you up a bit. And lens distortion is basically taking your subject out of, um, gosh, how would I call it? You've probably seen it on buildings where you take a photograph of a building and suddenly the edges of the building are kind of at an angle. And that happens at 18 mil. So what we can do is take a shot at 18. And then as, if I zoom in a little, we can do some cropping and things like that. So let's have a look at this. This is the shot. That's what I'm seeing at 18 millimeters. I've got it on manual focus. So there we go, nice and focused. If I push the zoom in, obviously we're starting to lose all the peripheral trees, but I can come right in here and get that avenue of trees there. So a couple of shots, let's see what we can get out of this. Now, I will mention that I've got no filters on here, no polarizer, no NDs, no colorants. I have in fact got my UV filter because I like to protect the lens, probably not necessary. So you can come out with your camera, with your kit lens, and hopefully take shots like this. Now I've set it at auto ISO, so I don't have to worry about the darkness. I've set that at aperture mode F11. So F11 gives me a crisp, sharp shot. And I think that looks rather nice at 18 millimeter. Now what I can do, I can zoom in. This is the shot zoomed in. So again, rather nice, nice and clear. But what I can do is I can take a, a mini panorama because if you remember at 18, which was this shot, I've got, it's basically a square crop, but I've got posts and things on the left and I don't want the, the first two trees in that shot. I'd rather have a shot like this, but I want to encompass the stuff on the left here and I want to encompass the stuff on the right there. And that's where in my photography, a panorama comes in. So I'm gonna take two shots now and we'll splice them together this is at probably about 30 millimeter. One shot there. One shot there. Rather nice. And what I'll do is take those two shots. I will, um, I say splice them together. It's stitch them together, isn't it? When you're doing a panorama. That gets me this. So no post processing. It's just the shot as it is. I'm quite pleased with that, you know, it's just a prime, a prime, a, a, a kit lens and I've been able to take that shot. <laughs> so far, so good. Shall we put it through its paces with macro photography? <laughs> to the extent that can you do macro, macro photography with a, with a kit lens? Let's see how we get on. <laughs> I've got some plantage. <laughs> Clematis vitalba. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation. I'll, I'll write it here. I say it as I see it, Clematis Vitalba, also known as Old Man's Beard. Now, 
What I'm thinking here is I can use the wide angle 18 mil to focus in on the subject, which is going to be, you know, one or two of these little clumps of plants here. Um, but I'll demonstrate how the dynamic range changes when I push the 55, really focus in on my subject. So let's get live view going for you. So I'm quite close to my subject, as you can see. And that's at 18 mil. I'm going manual focus here so that I can make sure I've really got it crisp and shiny. And you can see the trees in the background are quite um, distant. Now, if I change the focal range to 55, if I, first of all, if I come out as I do it, so I'm standing over here now, <laughs> and I've, it, it, it blows the background out. So there it is at 18 and to get the subject you can see the the dy dynamic change in the trees in the background as as i move closer whereas if i zoom in it keeps the dynamic range different oh, it just looks really lovely actually <laughs> i'm blown away by this kind of technology so that's that's the shot where shall i go for focal range here That shot was done at ISO 200, F8, 1 one twenty-fifth of a second. And the vocal, focal range on that was 48 mil. So not quite 55, let's get it to 55 because that's what the exercise is. Is this lens any good at 55? And I think it is, you know. So what I've got, F8, I'm gonna push that f-stop right as low as I can get it so that I've got to take live view off so that I can really blow the background out and have it as blurred as possible so that's 5.6 that's the f-stop closed as much as it can actually you know what I can't do aperture mode because the wind is blowing it so we're going to have to go with shutter priority and I'm going to give it four hundredth of a second nope what am I on one three hundred and twentieth of a second that should really capture it Ooh, if I can focus I'm manually focusing I forgot oh that wind it's blowing everything who knew it would be windy today I never plan these things. I just come out and do them, don't I? <laughs> See how close I am to this. So let's make sure I'm in focus. I'm pushed at 55 mil. Just wait for that wind. That's it. Oh, rather spectacular. And if I try and do that same one at 18 mil, again focusing, you can see here in this shot, I can't actually get any closer than that. So the 55 mil in this instance gives me my zoom in effect. So yeah, not too bad, not too shabby with 18 to 55. I've, I've got a lot of dynamic range that I can utilize. Yeah, sure, I could use a, a, a 140 millimeter or even a 270 millimeter stand here and go whoo, zoom right in. But if it's only a kit lens that you've got on your entry-level DSS, DSLR, then, you know, get out and use it and practice with it. And also, if you're already, like me, a year into your photography or you, you, you've been on the journey a little while, and this poor little lens has been sat in your camera bag and unused, I think it's time to get it out. <laughs> Make some more use of it. Right, let's go and see what we can do with some landscape photography. A kit lens is a very good lens for landscape because what are you doing in landscape? You're trying to get the whole vista and ordinarily you'll be using a wide angle lens for that. So you've already got 18 millimeters. So what I've got here, countryside, I can't go in, barbed wire, Ministry of Defense. I think I did hear some fires, shots. <laughs> I don't want to chance it. <laughs> But I've got a, a range of trees. I've got this lovely track leading off into the woods. So if I take a shot, again, I'll give you the live view. So that's 18 mil. 
Zooming in, you can see immediately that you start losing the whole vista at 55 mil. So that's where your 18 mil comes in handy for, for live view. So what I'm going to do is take a shot, F11 again. Just this one shot, right down the path. The I'll put the path in the right hand third. That gives me quite a nice shot, to be quite honest. But as wide as it is, it's also high and low. You know, we've got all this grass, we've got all this sky. So what I can do is zoom in again to around 30 millimeter and be crafty and take two or three shots, in this case four, and give myself a panorama which looks like this when, when um, stitched together. Gosh, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking that's really quite nice. Just for a demonstration of how good the lens is, and I'm not even thinking about composition, I'm just bang, 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 taking shots. And that's without post-processing. So if I did some post-processing, which I'm gonna do, and now is the post-processed image, I come away thinking, you know what? I should be using my kit lens a little more often. <laughs> okay, so what have we done? We've done the trees, we've done some macro, we've done a little bit of landscape. The only thing that's missing is portraits, which is taking a picture of a subject close up, kind of covered in the macro. Um, do I, where can I get a subject? It's either going to be a person or it's going to be an animal or it's going to be an object. So let me have a think about that while I'm driving along and um, hmm, see if I can come up with something. Well, that was interesting. I, um, as usual, didn't really plan it. I just went out and <laughs> hit and miss, but that's the way it goes. Hope you got some stuff out of that. Oh, I found it interesting. I didn't get a portrait because I didn't have um, a subject, but perhaps the Clematis vitalba was subject enough because that demonstrated the different focal ranges and blurring out the backgrounds. Just replace that plant with someone's face. <laughs> Take a selfie now, couldn't I do that? So yeah, off with the hat. You have to excuse the hair. It's gone a bit crazy. Um, I'd have it cut, but I'm due to do some acting and production have said, do not cut your hair. We want wardrobe to do the thing, which is a bonus for me because I get my hair cut and I get paid for having my hair cut. Win-win mm -hmm. <laughs> as they say. So anyway, back to the subject of kit lenses. Are they any good? Are they? Really? Really? I would have to argue they're not too bad at all. They might be lower quality build than your three, four, eight thousand pound lens. But you know, if you're kicking off your career or your hobby with an entry level DSLR, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, whatever it may be, now the sun comes out, look at that. Whatever it may be, you're bound to get a kit lens with the camera that you buy. Or if you've already got a camera and it's sitting on a shelf or it's in a cupboard gathering dust, then it's time to get that camera out. You know, I, when I first bought this, I thought, oh, what am I gonna do? What are all these dials? What's all this menu functionality? But you know, the more you do it, it's the same as everything. It's me playing guitar. Started off learning four chords and now um, I'm semi-professional. <laughs> in as much as I can go to a gig and perform and get paid for doing it. And you just play and play and play. It's the same with photography. You just take pictures, you take pictures, you start on fully auto, you move to priority mode so that you can um, have control over your exposure compensation. You start moving to aperture priority so you control the aperture, the camera does everything else. You go to shutter priority so that the shutter speed you regulate, the camera does everything else. Finally, you move to manual mode and you control everything and it's not as daunting as you think. So yeah, that concludes my exercise with my kit lens. I'm quite pleased with the results and I'm quite pleased with the way that it handles. I think I might be using this a lot more than I, than I usually do. So with that, I will say thanks for watching and bearing with. 
Now, if you click this little link here, this was the first video I ever put up on my channel where I actually went out in the field and used this lens. So as ropey and rusty as it is, give it a, give it a click and um, go and see how I used it down at Dungeness. Bye for now.